Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Nafula and today we have a guest who's a DB uh, 2023 winner. So I'm going to let him introduce himself and then we're going to ask just a few questions and then we'll do another interview later and then we'll cover more questions. So welcome to my show today. Can you please introduce yourself? Thank you for this opportunity given to me. My name is Isabel Geoffrey, a DB 2023 winner from Kampara, Uganda. I'm so honored be here for this interview. Thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned and keep watching. Okay, thank you. So he showed up like he came in yesterday. So literally this is the first day in America. He just spent one night in America. And I'm like, you know what, you need to do the new interview the next day. So how do you feel about being in America, Geoffrey? Well, um, I'm so happy. So I cannot express it here physically in my face, <laughs> but I'm really very happy deep in the inside because this all long time heart dream has been fulfilled by the grace of God. So tell us along your journey. So let's begin with the application for the green card. When did you apply for the green card? I applied the, on 21st of October 2021. So 21st of, not last year, the year before, yes, correct? Yes. Okay, so when you applied for the green card, people like to look at the picture. I'm going to show them, you know, your picture. But how, how did you take the picture? Well, uh, I went to one of the approved photo shops mm -hmm. in Kabaragala. Those who know Kabaragala, mm -hmm. it is a, a, a suburb, small town in mm -hmm. Kampara. Mm -hmm. There is an approved shop called the Coset Photo Studios. It is approved by the U.S. Embassy Kampara okay. for taking the U.S. visa passport photos. So that's why I went and I took my DV lottery passport size photo and then they gave me a soft copy. Okay, so they give you like in a CD or how do they, they give you, they send it on the phone, like how do they send you the image? They send the photo on the phone, by, the phone. by mail. Okay. So after sending me that photo, I went back home, mm -hmm. I got my laptop, I sat down on the computer, mm -hmm. I typed www.dvprogram.state.gov, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. then I followed the, 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 the procedures as far as the feeling was concerned, by putting in my surname, given mm -hmm. name, marital status, mm -hmm. highest level of education, my current address, mm -hmm. and all that. Then so, uh, I selected the, 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 the option of uploading that photo. Okay. Then, uh, so you didn't need to edit anything. Once they give you the picture, like it's ready to go. It is ready to go. Okay. So when you applied, you said you applied for yourself, right? Yes. yes. So you must have heard something about, how did you find out about the DP library? How did you come to find out about it? Well, uh, I had a friend. Mm -hmm. I won't uh, disclose his name, but I had a friend. Okay. That friend, he, after him applying, for me, I didn't have any idea about DV Lottery. Mm -hmm. He was like, ah, I have my brother. Every time he's yelling, going to America, but he doesn't have any connection over there. Mm -hmm. Let me give him a chance to try. Wow. Then he, said, he sent me a link. And he was like, you can take the passport size photo immediately mm -hmm. and apply. Then I was like, ah, is like, this a scam? <laughs> I was sure that he, I will win. Then he was like, it is a random selection, you can win. Mm -hmm. You can win or you may not win. But you never know, each of us has a different luck. Mm -hmm. For you may apply and win. Then I took faith. Mm -hmm. I went and took pictures, a, 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 a passport size photo, as I say. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I went and opened that link, which he had sent to me via WhatsApp. I opened it with my laptop then uh, I followed the procedures as I said before. Wow so uh, how many times have you applied? For the it was my first time to apply for the DV lottery then I won. Wow so you are one of the lucky ones who win uh, the first time. So now you've won the green card lottery yes. so guide us like what what happened after? Well when I found out that I'd won, I'd won the DV lottery mm -hmm. actually let me first take you back uh, after submitting mm -hmm. for the application, they bring what you call the confirmation number. Okay. They tell you don't close that uh, web page mm -hmm. before saving those details because those details, they include your surname, mm -hmm. uh, in the year of birth, mm -hmm. then the confirmation number. Okay. So that confirmation number, when the results are out the following year in May, always it is around the 6th of May, sometime 8th. Mm -hmm. but they don't exceed 
within those first days of the So that's the next year after next your plan. Year okay. After your plan. Mm -hmm. So when the results are out, you go back and log in. Mm -hmm. There's what we call the entrance entrance DV. They say it is DV twenty twenty three. It's on the same website. It's that yes. website you apply that. Yes. Yep. So it is called the entrance status check. Mm -hmm. So on the entrance status check, when you type in the entrance status check for DV twenty twenty three, like for my case for DV twenty twenty three, mm -hmm. they bring down a drop down menu whereby you put in the confirmation number, the the surname, the year of birth, then there is a, a code that is always displayed there on below. Then you put in, then you submit. So okay. it, it will search, search, search. If you are randomly selected, a warm, a warm, a warm coming, a warm message will come. <laughs> like a letter. Yeah. So, so you get like a letter that says, you know, you've won and you've been randomly selected and that's when you find out that you've won, right? Exactly. Okay. So after you did that, you won and then what was the next step after you saw the letter? The letter, it had instruction that I should fill the DS-260 mm -hmm. with all my family accompanying members mm -hmm. immediately. Okay. Yeah. So I went ahead and uh, I filled the DS-260. Okay. But before filling that DS-260, mm -hmm. um, I had to find the host. Okay. So I tried searching for the host for the first week, second week, not finding the host. Okay. But that one didn't stop me from filling. Mm -hmm. I went ahead to fill. When I reached that point of where I need to put in the details of the host, mm -hmm. like the host is that address where my green card will be made after being processed by the USCIS, mm -hmm. I had to stop and look for the host. Okay. It took me around four weeks to find the host. Okay. So I got the host uh, through a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was like a friend of a friend? Yes. Okay. So that guy, when I reached out to him, I told him, my brother, I want DV 2023. So I'll be going to America as a, a permanent residence. Mm -hmm. But uh, before my application will be processed for, to be ready for my interview in the Nairobi Embassy, mm -hmm. they need the, me to get the host details where my green card will be made. If I, if I told, my visa is approved. So that brother was like, you know what, I have a friend who lives in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Let me give him a call. Mm -hmm. So when he, he got the phone, he called the friend in Indiana. The friend was like, he won? Wow, Kongs. How lucky is that guy is? Mm -hmm. Then I was like, it is by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. The guy sent the details immediately. He gave me the name, mm -hmm. the, the city, mm -hmm. whatever, each and everything. Mm -hmm. Then he, I moved with my laptop mm -hmm. to go to visit that friend of mine. So I immediately. So your friend was in Uganda. Who was in Uganda? But then had a friend who in gave the you the address who was in America, correct? Right? Exactly. Okay. So I immediately opened my laptop. I switched on my laptop. I logged into into my DS two sixty. You now logging in, they need the confirmation number, mm -hmm. the case number, and the year of birth. Okay. Then I logged in. Then I went to the the option of putting in the details of what the the the, the, the spot. The, I mean the host. Mm -hmm. I put in the name of the, the, the host, the address, the zip code, the state, and the city, and his phone number. Then yeah. I proceeded to the next. Then I put in the details of my parent, my highest level of education. Mm -hmm. uh, I was single, so I didn't... I didn't I, so you didn't have a lot of information to no. fill in, so it was a DS to 60 was easy. So yes. after you submitted it, yes. what happens after? Well, uh, after submitting it, mm -hmm. They always bring a summary of your application mm -hmm. and it's called the DS-260 confirmation page. Okay. So I, I had to print it out mm -hmm. so you can log in at any time you wish mm -hmm. and you have access to that phone. Okay. So I had to print it out and I had to wait. So for my DS-260 to be processed as I'm, uh, as I'm waiting for the second notification later. As I'm uh, at the same time waiting for my case to be carried to get the second notification later. So you can get an interview. So let's start where you have an interview at the embassy and they sent you like, okay, these are the requirements that you need for the interview. Can you take us through that, that process? Well, uh, after I submitted my DS-260, let me take it back shortly. Mm -hmm. They told me uh, I got the notification message after submitting it. Mm -hmm. Sent you, uh, DV applicant, 
the, I mean the Sanchez, the migrant visa application applicant, your application has been sent to KCC eh, for mm -hmm. further review. Mm -hmm. Then there is a down three points that I should follow. One was obtaining the supporting documents. Okay. Two was like uh, I should take the required passport size photos that I will present to the embassy mm -hmm. when my interview is ready. Mm -hmm. Then um, the third one, I think the third one I'm forgotten, but there are three when you submit. Okay. There are three points, the highlight that you should do, consider at that time. Okay. Seriously. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and I applied for the birth certificate. I didn't have it because it's a supporting document. Okay. Confirmed that I was really born on that particular day, mm -hmm. which I filled in the form. Mm -hmm. Then I also went ahead to apply for the police clearance certificate. Mm -hmm. For the Ugandanese, they apply through the the website of the Uganda Police Force. Mm -hmm. Then you select the option of a certificate of good conduct for mm -hmm. immigrants. Okay. When you apply for the certificate of good conduct, it comes two in one. Mm -hmm. The certificate of good conduct and the police clearance certificate. Mm -hmm. So when I applied for that, I went and made the payments for the birth certificate. Ugandans, you pay 5000 in mm -hmm. any bank. Mm -hmm. Then you take that payment receipt with the details of your birth notification record from the hospital where you were born mm -hmm. and the details of your parent can be either the national ID of your parent, you get a photocopy and the national ID of your dad, you get a photocopy and also your national ID, you okay. take a photocopy with that payment, you stop them together, you take them to the national identification registration authority at one of their offices. If you're in Kampala, you go to Korol. Mm -hmm. If you're in any part of the country, you go the National Identification and Registration Authority of Uganda, mm -hmm. abbreviated as NILA, it has offices at every part of the country. Okay. Yes. So you go and you process your birth certificate. Then for the policy, clearance certificate, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the certificate of good conduct, I paid 76,000 Ugandan shilling. Okay. You can pay it in any bank. Mm -hmm. Then you get that payment reference. You go with it with, together with your passport or a national ID. Mm -hmm. You go with it at the Naburu Biometric Center. Mm -hmm. But you go there after booking the, the, the appointment. Okay. Like after making the payment for the certificate of good conduct, mm -hmm. you go back to the website of the Ghana Police Force. Oh, to make an appointment to that office? Yes. Exactly. Oh, okay. okay. So you pick a date. Mm -hmm. When you pick a date, they will send you a notification message via mail. Mm -hmm. That your appointment then for biometric fingerprint taking, it is on such and such and date at this time. Mm -hmm. So you keep time following that notification. So upon your, not your date of appointment, you take your national ID, the payment reference, mm -hmm. and the, the printout of the application. Mm -hmm. That we shall have found on their website. You print okay. it out and go with it. Okay. Plus two passport size photos of Ugandan size. Mm -hmm. Not American size. You can they take either American <laughs> size or <laughs> Ugandan size. Mm -hmm. There's no problem. You go with two passport size photos, the printout of your application, mm -hmm. the payment reference mm -hmm. receipt, and also the your identity card or a passport. Okay. Then you go for the fingerprints. Okay. So after taking your fingerprints, it takes uh, like uh, one week. Mm -hmm. Your certificate will be out for pickup. Okay. And it's valid for six months. Six months. So now you have your birth certificate, you have your certificate, police clearance. Yes. What else did you need? As far as my part was concerned, I was done with, uh, with the documents if they wanted. Okay. So now because you're scheduled for the interview. So what doc other documents did you need to gather before your interview? Well, um, I had to get the affidavit to support, okay. the tax returns, mm -hmm. and uh, the identity card mm -hmm. of uh, the person who's going to sponsor me. And the sponsor is not the host. Mm -hmm. Oi, the, the, sponsor, the host can serve both. So you can have somebody who's a host and also a sponsor, yes. and you can have somebody who's a host but then somebody else sponsors for, you, yes. for your affidavit of support. Exactly. So with the affidavit of support, mm -hmm. you got an address, a friend of a friend found you a host. So did that host give you the affidavit of support or how did that go? 
Well, uh, that host did not give me that debt of support. Okay. Actually, what happened, mm -hmm. um, when I talked to him about mm -hmm. the issue of the affidavit of support, mm -hmm. the tax returns mm -hmm. and identity card, he mm -hmm. instead just he disappointed me, told me, you know what, mm -hmm. my brothers and neighbors is not just here personal information like that. Because it's personal information, like oh, you know yes. your taxes and everything, That's your social security number is there, so that's really personal information for somebody, for people who live in the US, so it's not easy for somebody to just give it like that. Exactly. So from that point, I was somehow disappointed. But uh, little did I know that it was a blessing in this guy. Mm -hmm. I had to kneel down and ask God. Mm -hmm. I told God, you are the one who shows me among the many millions of people who apply mm -hmm. for this. Make it all for me. Mm -hmm. I kept on praying, praying, praying as time was going. Mm -hmm. Reaching out to different people um, to help me out, but uh, many of them were turning me down. That one did not stop me continue praying hard. So how important is it that you to support at the embassy, do you really need it or is it optional when you go to the uh, interview? As far as uh, the US Embassy in Nairobi is concerned, mm -hmm. it is a must requirement. So it's a must, without it you will not get a visa at Nairobi. So if you are scheduled for Nairobi interview, and in okay. Nairobi, if they require for a bit of support, it's a must that you obtain it. Because you will not get a visa unless you present their bit of support. Because we've had, a, we've had another YouTuber who tells people like, oh, Abidabid of support is not essential in Nairobi. But Abidabid of support is a must. And you can ask people who've gone there and who did not have it, what happened to them. Pretty much they did not get a visa. So now that you realize like it's important, what did you do from there? Well, um, I kept on reaching out to different people, as I said. Mm -hmm. Many of them were turning me down. Mm -hmm. But you know, there is a proverb that says among us, the group of 10 people, mm -hmm. not all of them can be against you. At least mm -hmm. one can be on your side. Mm -hmm.